Welcome everybody to our seventh um, session in our readmission reduction prevention series. Our goal is for this to be as interactive as possible. Today is National Stress Awareness Day. So we'd like to do what's called a chatter fall. Um, and we're going to ask everyone to type in to chat how you alleviate your stress, but don't hit enter yet. So right now your assignment is just to type in how you reduce your stress for National Stress Awareness Day. I am Dana Sini, and I'm gonna be one of the facilitators of our conversation. Today, we're going to talk about uh, communicating across the continuum of care and collaboration. And we've got some great guest speakers. My colleague and partner, Amy Daly, will be joining me in the discussion. We both have recent long-term care experience and hope to provide you with valuable information. So if you haven't hit enter yet, please do. And let's see how everyone gets rid of stress. Exercise, meditation. Kathleen, spend time in the barn. What kind of animals do you have? Leah, I'm going to invite you to my house. You reduce stress by cleaning. Thank you everyone for participating. We are Alliant Health Solutions. We're your quality improvement organization and we are here to provide support education, resources, and assistance. Barn full of horses. Wonderful. I love horses. Um, to make healthcare better. So we're going to take a look at where we've been. We are at session number seven of our Nursing Home Readmissions Affinity Group series. We started out with looking at facility capabilities and how those in, the impact on um, readmissions and ED visits in session two, we looked at detecting and communicating that change of condition using some of the interact tools and some of the Alliant Health tools. In session three, we looked at the clinical decision support tools and advanced care planning. And session four, we looked at managing readmission risk. Session five, we had um, Stacy and Megan here um, to talk about engaging the interdisciplinary team. Session six, we talked about engaging the patient and their care partner. And of course, today we're going to we welcome Megan and Stacy back um, a little later in our presentation. They will be talking about their um, experience with broadening the scope of that patient tool across the continuum of care. Our learning objectives today are, are um, will be, you'll be able to take away how to use technology to support a warm handoff process across the continuum. You can explain the importance of communication during micro transitions. And we will, you will be learning about one of the facilities approach to incorporating that patient education, like I talked about using a zone tool across the continuum of care. So when we talk about these um, transitions and, and communicating across um, the continuum, we found this uh, quote from Dr. Amy Boutwell and Marion Beal Johnson. Amy, Dr. Amy Boutwell does um, a lot of work in uh, care transitions and um, multi-visit patients. And, and I really thought this, this kind of set the stage for what we're going to be talking about. Um, and, and it compares the handoff to the handoff that occurs in track and field. And it, it talks about, you know, each athlete must adjust within the roles and ensure that the completed handoff is successfully executed. Um, and then at different Different times in the race, the, the athlete, much like our provider, you're, you're at a different point um, through each transition. You, you might be the receiving from the hospital or you might be the sender from the nursing home back into the community to that home care provider. Um, and so any time you're the receiver, you're the sender. And so that you really need to, to be cognizant of how you're communicating when you're in both of those roles. So this... Take a minute to read it, and, and that, that will really set the stage for, um, give you a, a good look at what your role is and how you can relate to this handoff that we'll be talking about. Next slide. There we go. So warm handoff. We created a tool, and it's on the Alliant Health um, website, and I am having a problem with my chat function, Dana, so um, if you're able to get it in there, that'd be great. So the, there is a, um, a video on this from Mori Health System, and it is a great example of 
using technology to incorporate the patient or resident as it come as they come over to the nursing home into that warm handoff. Um, it, it uses they're using uh, an iPad and they're right in the hospital patient's room. So it's the nurse and the patient, and they do their their traditional uh, nurse to nurse uh, handoff and but they also incorporate that patient and they are able to introduce the patient using the video. So the patient gets to see the nurse who's gonna be welcoming them as well as be a part of the handoff, hearing what information is being communicated and they take a minute to ask um, the patient questions as well. Really great video. Um, I encourage you to take a look at it. It really seems like it would be fairly simple to, to implement. Uh, most of the nurse to nurse calls are happening over the phone anyway. So, you know, we, we learned a lot from uh, COVID and the use of technology. So this is a great way to implement it. And, you know, like I talked about some of those transitions, the big ones that we think about are the hospital to the skilled nursing facility, and then, you know, the skilled nursing facility to home health or um, to assisted living, or, you know, sometimes you may be talking to, um, it's not the official warm handoff, but sometimes you might be talking to a family member who's out of town and kind of, handing off before you send that patient back home. So this um, tool also gives you a lot of tips and some resources in how, how to incorporate that warm handoff and, and how you can improve on something that you're already doing. And I'm sure most of you are already doing it, but it's kind of getting back to those basics and refreshing our teams on how, how important that handoff really is. One of the other things um, that we want to talk about is microtransitions. And very often, these are the times that we don't really think about uh, the doctor's office, a lunch outing with the family, um, going to the hair salon, attorney's office. But um, how many times do you find that they're out with the family and there's a doctor's appointment added on? Or they go to the doctors and um, <laughs> their dialysis access has changed, um, or there's something that happens. So we have to remember that during some of these um, micro transitions, we also do a touch point, some kind of handoff, whether it be with the family or care partner, um, the office or facility or practice that they're going to, or at some point, communicate and just determine, you know, if anything happened there at the hair salon, you know, was there any issue? Was there any, um, how many times do we hear of, you know, one of our um, residents having a hypotensive episode at the hair salon? So we really need to um, start uh, touching base with those partners also uh, and, and incorporating those aspects into the plan of care as well. In previous sessions, we've talked about our zone tool and we have our fabulous team from MM Ewing back. Um, they've talked to us before about using our zone tool and they used our heart failure zone tool to um, begin teaching um, some residents uh, at admission um, to try to hopefully reduce readmissions and um, acute changes. And then they um, decided to take it through the continuum. So, Megan and Stacy. Hi. So, as Dana said, um, my name is Stacy Gibbs, and I have my colleague here, Megan Gravino, and we are a part of a team at a long term care facility that is 178 beds. And um, we um, are part of a health system um, that we're actually attached to a hospital um, right on the same campus. Um, and once we started implementing this heart failure tool um, in our LTC, um, like we previously talked to you guys about if you were at the previous session, um, we really saw the benefits that, um, you know, there was a lot of potential here, um, not just with within the nursing home, but across the health system. Um, so as part of our quality improvement, I had shared this information at the um, system-wide quality board meeting. And 
instantly got uh, very excited emails while I was still in the Zoom meeting um, from other people in the health system, um, one being one of our primary care providers. Um, one of our physicians was on the call. She saw this and heard about it. And she sent me an email and said, I need that. I need that in my practice. Um, and then our chief nursing officer was very excited to see it and um, wanted to see how we could implement this um, so that when we have um, residents that are, or patients that are diagnosed, that it's not that's it's not new news, right? Um, that or as they if they get readmitted, we're all using that same language. So in our um, in our organization, we have the ability to um, spearhead like smaller groups of um, in, interested um, peers to work on change projects. And we have, uh, they call it a do it group. Um, so with the interest, I, I decided to put together a do it group. Megan's sitting on that group um, with, with me. And uh, we are hosting other people from the organization to get together and talk about this tool and other readmission uh, high risks. Um, because as we talked about before, um, when we talked about the heart failure tool, and as it says on here, you know, we talk about these things with our patients. We talk about these these things with our with the family members, but a lot of time our messaging is not the same. Our verbiage is different, and so you can tell someone the same thing three different ways. Um, and if we're pointing them in three different directions to three different education tools, it can be very overwhelming for people. And so having this one set thing. Um, makes it very um, tangible, clear, and simple. And, and, you know, all of us need more simplicity. I think, um, you know, that's part of the reason why I answered uh, go on a walk, pray, or stress clean whenever I'm stressed out because it helps me to bring back the simplicity when I'm overwhelmed. And our residents and patients and their families, when they have an admission or readmission, it's stressful. It's a stressful situation. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and they're not thinking about the long game, right? They're thinking about that readmission at that point, being in the hospital, the logistics of who's caring for my dog while I'm here, who's going to take care of the kids or the grandkids or whatever other responsibilities they have. Um, they're thinking about all of that. And so when we're talking to them in that acute setting, how much are they really retaining when they're overwhelmed? Um, so it's a great opportunity. And we were talking about this within our health system. Okay, in acute, if someone is newly diagnosed or we're just starting to implement this tool and they have this diagnosis, we would implement the tool with them there. But then when they're discharged, this same tool is to be used either with us here at the long-term care facility and rehab or at their home with their PCP. And for all of us to have simple access to it, how are we going to, um, you know, facilitate that across the system? How are we going to use this tool? And then, like I said as well, it got us talking about okay, what other readmission areas or um, do we need to, to focus on? And the beautiful thing is, I'm not paid to say this. The beautiful thing is, is that the tools are already there. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were in the meeting and started talking about it. And I had kind of just come up with CHF, COPD, pneumonia, and in, uh, infection, sepsis risk. We were in the meeting and someone from the pharmacy said, you know what I constantly am seeing? People don't understand their anticoagulants. And sure enough, there is an anticoagulant zone tool already created. Um, so it it's great in that the um the hardest part is for, for us as a facility is figuring out how are we going to um 
A, make sure the staff all know and understand. B, make the resources available to everyone where they know they can get at them quickly. And then C, actually doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really what we have started to work on right now. Megan, do you have something else to add? What I was just going to say the carryover from, from practice to practice, like whether you're in the skilled nursing facility or you're going, or you're being discharged with a community home health agency, or you're going to your primary care physician. So each of us having that carryover, that consistent, clear communication with the same tool. Um, so that's what we're working on is making sure all of our different areas have access to that. And we had our first dig, our do it group meeting. Um, was that this week? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was like, no, it was last week. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we have, um, I think that whenever people hear stuff like this though, and I, I guess is it okay, Dennis, if I tell people to get in yes. the chat a little bit, um, you know, what are some things that sounds overwhelming or it's too hard to do that? Um, because I think that, you know, we are in a, we are in an organization that definitely encourages us to, to put together peer groups like this. Um, but I've worked at other organizations that are not like that. So what are some challenges you would see in, in implementing these tools across the continuum? Because the beautiful thing, like I said, is they're already made. Um, and something else too, that we're sitting and, and walking through each tool and saying, does this make sense for our population right now? And who would be the correct discipline to be focused on, on which areas? Um, because it's not just a nursing thing. Um, so if you have, you know, thoughts like that, I would love to hear what people see, foresee challenges to be. Um, if you'd share that in the chat a little bit. Um, but we, you know, we have people that we've asked to be on this. So we have some providers that are on the team. Uh, we have um, some people, a medical office assistant is on the team. We have a pharmacist on the team, a social worker, um, so and it's people that weren't on previous sessions, the way that they kind of broke this down was that um, therapy would walk um, residents to the scale each day. And instead of being like one of the big facility scare, scales, um, they were using a scale like you would use at home. So to see, can the person balance on that itty bitty scale? Can they look down and actually read the numbers? And then can they do the math with this is my weight today, now tomorrow my weight is this. And those are actual functional goals that are covered by a med stay. Social work would help make sure that they have a scale and everything. Uh, nutrition helped figure out and work with them regarding their diet. So having each department work with the person throughout their stay, they were better able to understand it and how to implement these zones into their lifestyle. Yeah. Um, so that rather than going home and trying to now figure out how do I build this into my life? How do I make it a routine? You guys already did that. Right. Mm -hmm. And was it a lot of work to do that? No, a Things lot of it already was... doing. Yeah. <laughs> right. We're already doing it. It's just about having that consistent tool to refer to and for the patient to refer to after discharge. And then and when you're sharing with the other like uh, physician's offices and if they go to acute care, if you're spreading it across the continuum, now they can also, if they somebody calls the doctor, they can say, I'm in the yellow zone. Right. Or mm -hmm. I'm in... And everyone can start saying, um, a family member from out of state can call mom. Mom, what zone are you in today? Yeah. You had somebody that spoke primarily Italian. Mm -hmm. Yes. So she um, was primarily Italian speaking. We tried, we were implementing this tool to, to use with her. And, um, you know, she was basically managing her own health, but the daughter um, would step in for, um, you know, when there was language barriers and things like that. Um, so 
the daughter actually, we gave her this tool, but also gave her like an empty version of it and uh, helped translate it for her mom so that her, so that they could be talking the same kind of language with um, the tool. And the, the daughter said how much more she understood about CHF through this. She didn't really understand as much um, prior to, to what her mom needed to be looking at. She knew her mom needed to weigh herself. She knew that she needed a low sodium diet, but she didn't have other tangible things to be looking at or asking about. Um, so it, it's helpful, like you said, it's not just for the, the patients, but for the families too, to be able to say, you know, mom, I can't make it over to visit you today, but tell me when you weighed yourself this morning, what zone did you end up being in? Um, how are you feeling? You know, um, where does that put you on the zone? Should we be calling your doctor? Um, so that you don't end up getting that frantic phone call that, you know, your mom has to be rushed to the emergency room again. So Stacy and Megan, I know, um, when you talked about implementing it within your facility you did you did that um classic small test of change you started it on your rehab unit and you were you know working just with a few patients and and then circled back you actually found that you needed you wanted to add something to the tool but um do you foresee in your do it group is the hospital going to do the same are you going to do it probably small scale before you push it out that's what, yeah, that's that. what we're anticipating is um, we'll do small um, scale because we want to implement the use of not just one tool. So I think that our phase out is probably going to be one tool and then um, see how that goes, work out some kinks of um, how we're going to push it out and then go to, to our other tools. But we're talking through all of the tools right now um, so that um, we can do kind of the, the implementation in phases. And we're hopeful next time uh, in our next do it group to have someone from corporate communications there as well, so that they can help with the facilitation of, you know, how, how can we maybe get it to like Thompson webpage so yeah. that yeah, our our nursing home staff or our practice family practice staff, et cetera, they can go on there, click access. We know it's available on the Alliant website as well, but you know, thinking about maybe Thompsonizing, you know, you know, just adding our our Thompson touch to it as well and how we can implement it across the board. Yeah. And also the access then to families and their the patients because let's all be honest, we lose things. And so um, is there uh, is there a way that we can have it easily accessible to redirect them? Like if they get onto their doctor's portal online, is there a way to direct them to our to the tools mm -hmm. um, to, to easily access? I'm not an IT person. Um, so that's why we have other people with gifts, different gifts and talents. Mm -hmm. And with that too, we were talking earlier about how we broke it down to the different team members. And, you know, like Megan said, it's a lot of stuff you already are doing, you know, many of the times the social workers are going in and, and talking about things, um, much beyond the person's, you know, um, uh, so, yeah, like yeah, the psychosocial, psychosocial needs. Yeah. They're, they're getting more information. Yeah. yeah. They're getting a lot of that practical information of, Oh, oh, you know, they, they told the social worker that, yeah, they have a scale, but it's upstairs and they don't have anyone to ask to bring it downstairs, but they have a bathroom downstairs and we've just been planning for them to be discharged to the first floor. Right. But no one has thought through the, you know, the other, but they disclose that information usually to someone like the social worker. Right. 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 So we yeah. never think of some of the health literacy, um, things because CHF has such very definitive guidelines that we as practitioners think, weigh yourself every day. If it's more than this, you know, call your doctor. If it's more than this, go to, you know, acute care, um, watch your diet. It's just like, but we never stop to say, do you have a scale at home? Right. Can you do the math? Yes. And Stacy has another uh, really good analogy with a glucometer. 
Yes. So um, when I was a bedside nurse, I took care of the patient who came in in um, hyper uh, ketoacidosis, diabetic ketoacidosis. So he was, his sugar was completely out of control. And when I asked him, do you check your um, sugar at home? Oh yeah. I know how to work my glucometer. And he said, but I think the machine is broken. And I said, why do you think your machine is broken? Um, he said, every time I checked it, it kept um, coming up with H I H I. And he had no idea that that meant his sugar was high. Um, <clears throat> the point of where the, the man ended up with a hemoglobin A1C of almost is of 14. Um, so a lot of time he knew how to use it. He was testing himself correctly because then I had him, okay, is this like the machine you have at home? Yes, this is the exact one. Okay, show me what you do. He was testing himself correctly. He just didn't know how to interpret the results um, and that there was going to be something other than numbers that could pop up there. So are we thinking through all of the, the things for our, for our um, patients? Yep. You know, when we sat down and talked about this, um, you know, we talked about what the CHF tool okay, eat a low sodium diet. And, you know, it came up in our conversation as an interdisciplinary team. Does the person have the understanding of what a low sodium diet is and how that is on a food label? But then also, do they have the resources when they go to the store to make the choices that fall into that diet, right? What is their budget? Are they going for you know, a TV dinner because it's, it's simple and cheap and they live alone. So why cook a big meal? And <laughs> mm -hmm. we also so have to take into consideration how much this is actually empowering your team. You know, you're not putting the sole responsibility on the nurses. You're empowering your social workers that their information is valuable. You're empowering your CNAs that, you know, they're helping to disperse this knowledge to the patient. So the more you empower and boost employee morale, you know, the more valuable your employees are going to be. You feel, sure. not be. I I know we're kind of getting towards the end here. Yes. And, you know, we didn't get much in the, the way of chat about what people may have barriers um, for getting it across the continuum. But, you know, um, Alliant has has the um, the PCHs. And if if a facility is here and, and isn't aware of, you know, which PCH is in their area that they can collaborate with, um, you know, you can reach out to your to your state quality managers and they can certainly help you connect. Um, with those with those groups so that maybe you know you want to reach out to a hospital or a home health agency or a primary care practice that is in your area and try to do um, what this team is trying to do. They're very early in their implementation so um, but it you know I thought it'd be a great opportunity for them to come and talk about um, because what a great concept to take a tool to collaborate. So, so Megan, when you say it empowers your team, it can also bring you together with those other providers and yes. help you form collaborative relationships. And then once you open that door, a lot of good things can come out of it. So um, Davis has put those um, quality managers into uh, chat for everybody. So definitely reach out if you um, are feeling like you want to um, get together, you know, with, with other providers, but you're not quite sure how. And just a simple thing to add to that, like Amy is saying something simple that we talked about implementing is when our, our resident is being discharged and we're using a particular home health service, you're already in contact with that home health service, sending them the tool saying, mm -hmm. Hey, this is how we're talking to them about it. So it doesn't have to be huge implementations of change, you know, do it incrementally like that. That's a simple thing that we've started. Right. Or our social worker following up with them two to three days after discharge saying, hey, how are things going? Do you need another copy of the tool? There's, there's yeah. little things that you're doing that you could just add one simple step to make it that much more effective. That's great. Thank well, we you, definitely guys. thank you for joining us back. And Dennis, you can kind of wrap it up. So thank you, everyone. Please, if you need anything, um, contact Alliant Health. We are here for you. I put in Amy and my 
emails because those I know off the top of my head, but we will um, get you to the correct state quality advisor. And we are more than happy to help you implement and operationalize anything you need because um, that's our passion. Uh, Alliance goals are to help you with opioid use and misuse, patient safety, chronic disease self-management, care coordination, COVID-19, immunization, and infection control training. Um, we're checking to see who has done infection control training. So we have a QR code here. And if you have any questions or want to get in touch with people, uh, contact julie.keeger at alliantehealth.org in Alabama, Florida, and Louisiana, or leanne.swalls at alliantehealth.org in Georgia, Kentucky, North Carolina, and Tennessee. We are also on all social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Thank you everyone for attending.